Nancy Bannock is chairman of the Historic Buildings Task Force. Nancy, isn't this just about the smallest uh, restoration project you've undertaken? Well, probably so. Our, we've never really taken undertaken a restoration project as, as, a, <clears throat> as being a sponsor of it. We've been kind of a task force to get things done or get, a catalyst oftentimes to try to just pull all forces together mm -hmm. to see what could be done about mm -hmm. something. Nancy Bannock was basically nonstop energy. She was a, a little dynamo. It's amazing how much she did. She's kind of like a bulldog. She won't let go, which is good. But we have not, we're not a membership organization or a foundation or an organization with money or anything. She was at the forefront of photographing historic places making other people aware of them. And that was a new thing for Hawaii. I'm a hands-on uh, cause fighter, let's put it that way. I moved to Honolulu in 1950 and um, Within a short time, I was the Hawaii editor of Sunset Magazine, and I did a lot of wandering around this part of town. I started out being horrified by uh, what uh, urban renewal was starting to do. The Chinatown going back to the late 1800s into the 1960s was 10 times larger, stretching from Nimitz all the way to the H1. So when urban renewal came in, then the freeway came in, everybody got thrown out of Chinatown. Everything from Queen Emma Street over all the way to Lubiha was demolished, and basically from Vineyard to uh, Baratana. The, the area was just completely stripped. There used to be schools, uh, churches, temples, lots of housing. All of it was just flattened in the name of progress. Our family got dislocated because of urban renewal. It gave government a chance to clean up the city, make the city look nicer, not have so many ugly buildings, lean to wooden structures, and a lot of people that did not look like what one would imagine America would look like. For the first time, the United States is making a nationwide commitment to make the city a better place to live. For the first time ever, all the problems of urban living are being attacked at once. Slums, traffic, pollution, and crowding. Urban renewal was not a local phenomenon. It was a nationwide federal program. Federal funds were available to support it. And the idea behind it was good. To give new life to the central city, Pittsburgh built an important downtown commercial center. Hartford built a great plaza above the streets. The problem was that it was somewhat indiscriminate, like a lot of these programs are. There was a lot of redevelopment in Chinatown and, and all across the country, not just Honolulu. Uh, some of the redevelopment projects did not work very, very well. The idea of, of displacing all these people and putting up Kuhio Park Terrace type structures was just awful to me. The redevelopment plans are heartless, unfitting, insensitive, sterile, unimaginative, without character, and perhaps economically unsound. 
In all America, old Honolulu is something very special. Yet our planners and city officials apparently don't appreciate it enough to help it survive. I think there was a lot of pushback and Nancy was really important in kind of leading that pushback at the time. Well, I think Nancy's view was slow down, take a look. Don't just willy-nilly destroy something because you think a concrete high-rise is a better use of the land. May 24th, 1966. A task force of the Mayor's Action for Beautification Committee objects to the plan to erect circular apartment towers connected by gardens between Mauna Kea, River, Baritania, and King Streets. The task force seeks an ordinance to create preservation districts in the city. The idea of a district was something kind of new. The National Historic Preservation Act was passed in 1966. The federal government then created the National Register of Historic Places. Chinatown individually those buildings, almost none of them would have made it to be considered for the National Register as individual buildings. But when you put them all together, the architectural sense that you get there because of how similar they were built and when they were built and the materials that were used made them valuable together. Nancy wasn't the only person involved. She was one of the bullets in the gun that ended up turning that into a historic district. But she was one of the bullets. The Powahi Urban Renewal Project should be reconsidered by City Council. Also, the ill-advised widening of New Wanu Avenue and King Street, still shown on the general plan, would wipe out rows of our finest old buildings. It was like it was a drumbeat to get rid of this place. And it was a real battle. It really was. There wasn't a compromise she didn't start out with compromise in mind. But you only get that way if you really feel the people and the history of a place. It was part of the history of all the different people who lived here, different ethnic groups who came in. It was the area of first settlement for immigrants when they moved, if they either came directly in some cases, or also moved off plantations to come into town. They generally ten tended to settle in this part of town. And um, uh, it was just, I mean, you just don't do away with all that and put up a bunch of 20th century uh, high-rise buildings or something like that. You know, it just, it just destroys everything. It's kind of the last remnant of Chinatowns that existed all over Hawaii. You know, there was a Chinatown in Hilo, there was one in Lehui, there was one in Lahaina, and they served the same purpose. They were a place where immigrants could come, make their way, transition into the society as a whole, and then invite more people to come. Do you have a favorite area in Chinatown? Well, I love Mauna Kea, New Uwanu, and Smith very much, and some of the cross streets too. And they're, they're very real, and they haven't really changed a whole lot. We're gonna have more and more people uh, appreciating what we have here. What's your yeah. hope for this next generation? That they pick up the ball and run with it? Or what you, what's your hope for that? Well, I would hope that we would get people who cared enough about something, you know, to get in there and, and make themselves heard and fight for it. Make some, make some noise about it and really you know, get in there and fight for it.